You know, the story of AW and when it was first forming, a lot of people heard about it and there's this guy with a lot of money who once started this wrestling promotion and in the beginning a lot of people were very skeptical about it and uh, I have to say that from the moment I heard about World Entertainment Series, I was I was skeptical from the moment. Oh, and we haven't talked about it a lot here on the show and it's for good reason. They've canceled yeah. their show Saturday, not taking place, after a postponement. Yeah. These things happen all the time. I don't think anyone expected that um, if they if that there would ever be a second show, if there even was going to be, a, if, if there was going to be a first. But yeah, you always hear about these things with like a rich guy who comes in and, you know, offers a lot of money to the wrestlers and then, you know, um, you go in there with this idea that you can sell a lot of tickets, book a big building or something like that, and then nobody buys tickets. I mean, this happens in Mexico more often than the United States now. It has, over the years, it's happened in the United States many times. And uh, I don't even know the people who were behind WES, but when I saw, like, the list of people, it was, you know, I mean, you know, we always talk about this, that... Um, when when people get cut by WWE, whether it's developmental or or main roster, some of them just you know like Drew Drew McIntyre just went right back on the grind and and you know improved himself greatly, ended up coming back. You know others will you know like Matt Cardona you know as an example just kind of like learned the indie scene and and took advantage of 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 his unique uh, situation you know and. Um, also, you know, um, had the time of his life and everything like that. But so many of the guys, you know, like uh, disappear or women and, and women as well. You know, they just don't go anywhere. Um, and it's, you know, obviously anyone who has WWE pedigree can go on indies and um, get booked. So the ones who don't, you know, I mean... The ones who don't do anything are the ones who don't want to do anything. And it's their absolute right not to want to do anything. I mean, it's like if you, you know, if you if you don't want to do that style of wrestling for not nearly the money you made before and you have another business or something like that or anything, you know, I mean, there's nobody that, you know, but these this show was all of these kind of people like, you know, Lena Finney, Nia Jax, CJ Perry, Lana. Um, the authors of pain, um, trying to think who else, Braun Strowman, although Braun Strowman has done a couple of matches here and there with that, with the, with, um, the EC3 promotion. Um, and, uh, you know, many others like that, that, you know, had names from WWE and the idea, and they were going to use Alistair Overeem as their big draw. And, you know, it was like they booked a big building in uh, Motor Point Arena, in uh nottingham england i believe and uh yeah the show uh dean matati who was formerly mojo Rawley, he was another guy who you know it's funny i was always like thinking that you know he needs you know he was a guy who i thought um was you know vince had given up on him i mean that's just the reality and and, and if he wanted to be a star in wrestling you know, he needed to go and finally they cut him and, um, you know, he did have a lot of uh, health issues from COVID, but he's fine now. But he got, a, he got another job and things like that. But this was like his first match back in a long, long time. And then it didn't happen. So, you know, you, I think that there's this feeling that, uh, um, you know, the, that, you know, that you're going to be able to go in there and, um, I mean, obviously they were offering a lot of money and, um, they claim that they, you know, paid the talent, but I'm skeptical of that because so many of the talent when the show was, when the first show was canceled, um, you know, wanted nothing to do with them at that point. And sometimes they were still advertised and things like that, but they claim that they're going to refund all the, the money. And sometimes these groups do, and often they don't. There was the group, one of the, Oh, there was that group in um, Mexico who still hasn't refunded money for, for you know, after a year. And um, they were the ones that they had, like, were using, like, Roosh to lure people or whatever. You know, he was the one making a lot of the calls. Um, a lot of, I mean, I know a lot of the CMLL talent, 
you know, was they were offered so much more money than they were making to go. And then that group, I think, you know, that group went nowhere, um, you know, very quickly. Uh, I don't think I think that they folded before their first show. Similar reasons, you know, um, offering people, you know, thousands of dollars for matches. It made no economic sense. So, um, yeah, World Extreme or whatever it is, World Entertainment Series. Um, you know, they still claim they're going to do a show, I, I think, at this point. If you're canceling a couple of days out, you're probably not doing a show um, ever again. So, uh, yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.